South Africa will require all crypto exchanges to obtain licenses by year end. The Financial Sector Conduct Authority has received 20 license applications so far and plans to take enforcement action against non-compliant exchanges. The move aims to protect financial customers from potential arm and South Africa becomes the first African country to implement such regulations affecting major exchanges like Luno and VALR. Now, individuals are offering financial services and crypto assets must also obtain authorization with failure to comply resulting in regulatory action. And this trend of stricter regulations extends globally as seen with Singapore's requirements for secure storage of customer assets. Uh, this morning, joining me from London, United Kingdom, is Ola Atushi, founder and CEO, CoinCoin Exchange. It's nice to have you join us on the show once again, Ola. Yes, uh, good morning to you. Thanks for having me. So, how fundamentally important is the licensing of crypto asset exchanges at this time? And why is it particularly of interest to South Africa? Well, I think uh, it's of interest to, uh, to all of the African nations. Um, and I think uh, I should mention in uh, the evolution of our conversations, uh, we've often spoken about the need for uh, regulations, uh, you know, for all the, uh, you know, financial instruments, uh, including digital assets, which are now, uh, you know, coming into the mainstream uh, as recognized uh, digital assets. Uh, I mean, recognized assets, if you like. So uh, my perspective is it's important to all regulatory bodies, um, and it's certainly good to see uh, South Africa, you know, leading the way uh, in introducing uh, some sort of regulation uh, and licensing for, uh, I believe, crypto uh, or cryptocurrency or digital asset exchanges initially. Uh, and then I think um, there'll be sort of more licenses uh, and sort of more registration requirements uh, for any cryptocurrency based, uh, you know, institution uh, or firm. Uh, why is it important to uh, South Africa? Well, I can uh, perhaps guess that uh, it's to do with um, a number of things. Uh, one uh, potentially could be to control, uh, you know, the flow of value, uh, perhaps from, uh, you know, one location to another. Uh, perhaps it could uh, have to do with uh, sort of keeping down crime or financial crime, uh, you know, specifically uh, in that country. Um, but again, these are just speculative points. Um, my view personally is that there's now a need to regulate um, all uh, financial assets and not just what you know we have in TradFi or traditional finance, uh, but the up and coming assets uh, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, and all the other digital assets. So I think that's probably the, the main reason why uh, you know the FCSA in South Africa is now sort of come on board and you know are looking at digital assets quite seriously. All right, so I'd like you to talk to us about the crypto market in South Africa and by extension Africa. How big? Would you describe it, and what would you say the adoption rate is? Well, um, in South Africa specifically, it is quite big. Um, so we can mention obviously the firms uh, which are well known uh, that are operating in South Africa and have been for quite some time. Uh, so Luno, uh, sort of you know very large firm uh, in crypto, uh, operates in uh, South Africa. Uh, I believe a lot of South African uh, you know users uh, have uh, you know if you like, a, uh, a Luno account. Uh, in terms of adoption, uh, the population of South Africa, I would probably guesstimate that a good 20% of the population are either involved with, have an account in, or have some sort of relation or some sort of involvement, uh, you know, with cryptocurrency. So uh, with the likes of Luno, and then, of course, you have the law, uh, which is a very large company. Uh, it's raised uh, almost $40 million dollars uh, over the last, I believe, uh, you know, 18 months. Uh, it's quite a lot of money going into, uh, you know, that sort of crypto sphere, if you will. If you will. Um, and of course, that means there are a lot of, uh, you know, South African residents, uh, South African nationals who are involved in cryptocurrency. Ergo, um, I'm fairly certain that the centralized authorities at some point have had to deal with queries around, you know, what's going on with cryptocurrencies or digital assets. So this, by this, I mean, you know, perhaps just uh, any member of the public. Um, and in recognition of that, uh, the FCSA in South Africa is probably saying, hey, you know, we need to put our arms around this industry. Uh, we need to bring it in. There's an expectation that if you want to operate in South Africa, uh, you need to have a license, you need to be registered. Uh, and I'm sure that will come with, uh, you know, all the norms, uh, which, you know, financial industries are kind of used to at this point, 
with regards to regulatory standards, uh, regulatory frameworks uh, and whatnot. So I think, you know, given the number of persons uh, in South Africa, and by extension, if you look at Nigeria, which has a very large population, uh, there is, uh, you know, a view that up to at least 40 million Nigerians either have some view on what cryptocurrency is, or perhaps are interested in getting involved at some point. Uh, out of that 40%, there's a good uh, eight to 10 million who perhaps have an account with a platform uh, somewhere. So, I mean, by extension, to answer your question, there is a need uh, for regulatory bodies to kind of understand what's going on, put an arm around the industry, uh, and sort of you know bring in some standards to ensure everyone's protected. Uh, by everyone, I mean the exchange uh, owners, exchange uh, you know companies, uh, and of course uh, the end users uh, who wish to invest, uh, you know, in digital assets. All right, Allah, we know that you have thrown your weight behind the regulation of the cryptocurrency sector. Now that we see that a new chapter of regulation is coming into place, what do you think the requirements should be, the basic necessary requirements uh, before granting licenses to these um, crypto platforms? Not only in South Africa anyway, we're scaling up from South Africa to Nigeria and to other African countries that make do with um, crypto platforms for transactions. Well, I mean, there are a number of things. Um, uh, again, if we look at the world at large, uh, in Europe, uh, there has been a lot of work done with regards to, you know, bringing exchanges in and ensuring they're regulated. Uh, there's been a lot of work done specifically uh, by the UK's FCA uh, to ensure that there's a standard, uh, you know, for digital asset exchanges. Um, now there's even more work being done by Europe's uh, ESMA. Uh, specifically with the introduction of uh, Mika, which is, uh, you know, the markets and crypto assets and uh, sort of introducing that regulation, uh, you know, across Europe. It is very important, I would say, that there is some sort of regulation. The standards obviously will be set in line with, um, you know, what traditional financial assets are currently, uh, you know, regulated under. So uh, one of the things I think is key is there has to be uh, for those who wish to run, you know, any sort of financial uh, entity or who, who wish to run uh, companies in the financial sector, I think it's key uh, that, uh, you know, such uh, persons or such entities are run by uh, individuals with some sort of uh, financial background or financial services experience. Uh, there are a lot of complex, uh, if you like, uh, you know, things uh, and a lot of, you know, tools uh, within the industry, uh, and there is a need to have a deeper understanding of how uh, the financial markets work. Um, and I feel that one of the key requirements will be uh, some sort of experience, some sort of background or training uh, within, uh, you know, financial services. I think that should be, you know, certainly a key requirement uh, in becoming regulated. Uh, you know, at this point, seeing as we're now seeing the maturity in the industry that we've uh, we've waited for for quite some time. All right, so uh, just to wrap it up, um, some people have actually argued that um, this licensing that um, South Africa is uh, promulgating might just be a way of generating funds and not necessarily to uh, monitor and guide the activities of um, the cryptoverse as the case may be. So what do you think um, the handlers of these platforms can do in a way to ensure that uh, the process is seamless? Because what we were trying to avoid is the issue of victimization on the part of the handlers and monies not being lost anymore on the part of customers on this platform. So how do you think we can channel this conversation forward and see how the process can be seamless and it could be a win-win situation for all stakeholders? Yes, uh, it's a very good question. Thanks for that. I think um, one of the key points we have to mention here is um, obviously from the perspective uh, of the regulators, uh, there has to be some transparency. Uh, the, you know, inherent nature um, of the technology underlying cryptocurrency exchanges, which is the blockchain itself, or if you like, uh, the distributed ledger technology, um, offers so much transparency. Uh, so any form of, uh, you know, regulatory standard should be based on transparency. The technology, um, uh, you know, has is out there and uh, it can actually aid the regulators in achieving what they wish to achieve uh, in a transparent manner. Right, so that way, you know, exchange holders, uh, those who wish to participate on exchanges, can have a view uh, of exactly, you know, how their funds are protected, you know, what the uh, regulators are actually doing, and okay. what they actually bring to the table. So I think, you know, that's that's, um, you know, a very key point that we have to be cognizant of, 
And of course, uh, from a user perspective, you know, protection of funds, right? You know, you want to be able to use an exchange and feel comfortable that your funds are protected. Uh, there is a, de a deposit scheme of sort in place, which allows for your funds to be protected in a, you know, a custody uh, system, which is regulated by central authority. There are a lot of positives mm -hmm. that can come from this. All right. All right. Thank you so much. I'm allowed to share found out uh, and CEO Conquan Exchange. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.